Welcome to Cost Effective Science. The rationale for this website is to introduce cost effective laboratory activities that you can do in a science classroom. Now, the rationale for this website is that every school and school board has different funding for their science departments, some, where some schools may have a large amount of funding and other schools may have very minimal funding. This in turn results in teachers feeling that with very minimal funding, they can't do that many lab activities because they are seen as very expensive. This results in a lot of book work and lecture style teaching in the science classrooms. So here I like I came up with a lot of cost effective activities that are very low cost that you could do in a science classroom. Now, if you go to this menu button and click about, that will take you to this uh, web page here, where it shows you that I am focusing on topics in grade eight science, specifically understanding life systems, which is the cells, and understanding matter and energy, fluids. Here I'm into the activities that I have created integrate both topics in the biology stream and the chemistry stream of grade eight science. If you go further, you can see the specific expectations outlined that I will be focusing on and I will be integrating together in this web page. If you scroll a little further, you will see some sample activities and by clicking on each, it'll take you to each of the three activities that I have created. Now, there's obviously theory behind why I chose to do uh, these hands-on experimental learning activities. And I just like to go over some of that first. If you click on why hands-on experimental learning, that'll bring you to some current research that has taken place to show how hands-on experimental learning actually promotes the success of students in the science classroom. Now first, when students were asked what they preferred um, uh, for their instructional methods, so what type of instruction they preferred in the classroom, 86% of those students responded that experiments were preferred compared to silent reading tasks, PowerPoint presentations, note taking, and standard lecture style. In addition, Almost 70% of students when asked stated that they would like more hands-on experiments in the classroom. So this shows that students want hands-on experimental learning and all the students that were actually um, uh, tested in the study were high school students in the science stream. Now, if we go to why active learning, there's a lot of current research on that and how this uh, results in more engagement in the classroom and higher test scores. So one study actually showed that active learning increases examination performance by just under 50%. Now this number may not seem like a lot, but it shows that with adding active learning and these lab activities, more almost half of the class is actually increasing their ability to perform um, well on examinations and tests. So this is actually quite a large number. In addition, um, standard lecturing practices, and what I mean by this is the standard uh, lecture style where the teacher is standing at the front of the class delivering uh, the lesson to their students, actually increases failure rate of students in science and technology by 55%. Whereas active learning, student failure rate is only 21%. So there's a 30% difference here between standard uh, lecturing style and active learning. Whereas with active learning, the failure rate actually decreases quite a bit. So these lead me to, um, to my current research, uh, sorry, to the current uh, website where I'm presenting you with cost-effective activities that you can do in the science classroom to increase engagement and increase the achievement of the students in grade 8 science. So if you go to that activity tab, you can see that I have created three different activities. Here we are going to look in on our first activity, which you can click there, or you can go up to the menu and click on activity one. 
The first activity that I'm looking at is called bubble membranes. Now, I'm not going to go into depth on what each activity is, but I'm going to tell you about the components present in each of the three activities. The first component is background. I provide background information on each of the activities that I will be performing. Next, I provide the purpose of each lab uh, activity, the connections to the specific expectations, and then here's where I get to the materials and costs for each of the activities. You can see that I compared prices uh, with items found at Walmart compared to items found at Ward Science in Carolina. Now, Ward Science in Carolina are two science distributors that common uh, boards and schools order their science materials from. To note, a bag of 100 bendable straws at Ward's is $4.45, where a bag of the exact same 100 bendable straws are actually a dollar at Walmart. So almost um, five times more you're paying at Ward Science compared to Walmart. At the end of each of my uh, materials list, I have the total cost for each, and it shows the difference that the amount that you're saving. Now, this may not seem like a lot, but if you're saving, say, $8 per class, per year, per teacher, that's quite a lot of money that you're saving in the end. Now, if we keep scrolling down, you can see the procedure for each of these lab activities. I go into quite depth for the procedure of each activity. And then at the end, there are questions that you can ask your students based on these lab activities. Now, don't feel limited to these questions. There are um, more questions, obviously, that you can ask that integrate both the topics together. Now, you can also access the PDF file at the end of each activity that will give you a downloadable PDF file that you can then save to your drive so that you do not have to go back and forth into this website every time. So like I said, there are three different activities. The second, viscosity and flow rate of liquids. And the third is gummy bear diffusion. All three of these activities, if you go and read further, integrate topics from understanding life systems and understanding matter and energy. Finally, if you go to this resource tab, you can find where to buy each of these materials. The great thing is that when you click on each of these links, it'll bring you to the page. This is Walmart, for instance. And Walmart is great because you can type in this search bar the item that you are looking for, click enter, and then from here you can sort the prices from lowest to highest. And this is where I found my 100 uh, bendable straws for $1 at Walmart. Similarly, there are links to Dollarama, Ward Science, and Carolina. And the reason I include these two, these science distributors, is because some materials are obvious that you cannot buy at Walmart or Dollarama because they are quite science related. So those still may be uh, beneficial for you to access. This is cost effective science. I hope you find this resource quite beneficial for your teaching practices.